everyone, this is Gail from Rainbow Food Rocks and Rainbow Healing and Wellness. And I'm here to show you my garden. So this is a garden update and to also let you know that I am going to be on uh, Green Greg's channel tonight with Elle Dakota. And she has the ultimate herbal database. I'll put the links in the description box. And we'll be showing off her database and talking about how to start building a community or many communities. Uh, and as many of you know, I'm gonna lift this up and kind of take you around with me. Uh, Greg is working on building up communities and doing some things in Arizona. All right, so here you have, this is phase four. I'm gonna go over to phase one, which is farther back, and I'm just gonna take you through how I spent shelter in place last year, because around this time last year was when Arizona went into shelter in place. And within a year, you can see how much food I am growing. So I have all these fruit trees over here too, and I'll talk about those. Those came last, uh, actually second to last. Those are phase, um, I think phase five. So I have six phases, and I'm gonna just kinda twirl you around with me and we'll walk around. So let's go ahead and start at phase one, and I'll tell you a little story here. I mentioned it in some of my other videos, but I thought I'd just go through and tell you the whole thing. So here we go. Oh my gosh, my poor banana tree. I have like a little banana plant that's not doing too well down there. All right, let's see if I can stick you over here. So I'm actually working with a stand, which is kind of fun because then I, you can actually see me as I'm showing you my garden. So here we have phase one, and as you can see, I have these delicious, oh my gosh, wait till you hear these snap. These delicious snappies. Did you hear that snap? Oh my gosh. These are so delicious and crunchy. So for Arizona, snap peas grow really well if you plant them while it's cooler. I made the mistake last year of starting off with phase one and phase two. Sorry, I'm chewing here. And I thought, oh, I'll grow snap peas in the summer. Yeah, 115 degrees snap peas, doesn't work. So phase one, I had tried and failed the first time and everything burnt to a crisp. So as you can see here, I have a shade cloth. This is a 70% shade cloth that I put over and I started using ideas from people like Diamond from Oppenheimer Ranch Project where I was regrowing celery so I was putting it in a bowl of water, waiting till it sprouted like a day or two, and then putting it in the soil. Now the soil I used and everything in this garden is totally organic, I haven't used any chemicals, and I did a mixture of getting organic soil from, um, what kind of, I guess you call it a garden store, and also getting soil from a farmer that's in, I think it's Tempe, Arizona, somewhere around, it's going toward Phoenix. And that uh, place is called Sing Meadows and Sing Farms. So if somebody is local and they want to get soil and compost, that's a great location to go to and they have lots. So uh, here, so I'm sorry, I'm still chewing on the snappy. That's how crunchy these are. Can you believe it? I, um, I have some, what do you call it? Uh, cilantro growing and I have a bunch of celery growing. Let me just take you along here. Let's see if we can walk around together, shall we? <laughs> and you can see, like, look at all these beautiful snap peas. Look at all that celery back there. I have a massive amount of celery and I juice it whenever I harvest. I'll juice like six jars worth and then I'll keep like three in the fridge and put three in the freezer. And I have some mallow back there. Sorry, it's like a jungle here. I need to do some uh, <laughs> some clearing out. I was busy. I, I don't know if anyone has seen me uh, with Rex Bear from Leak Project. And he and I went through Superstition Mountain, so I haven't done too many videos lately. I'm also taking two courses. I'm taking a, a yoga teacher training course and a, a life coach course. And uh, that's in addition to the fact that I already do Reiki and I do essential oils, meaning I bottle up and package up my own essential oils coming straight from India, from the Sarga Farms. And as you know, I am the author of the recipe book, Rainbow Food Rocks, so pretty busy. All right, so that's phase one over there, and that's phase two. 
And so for phase two, you'll see a lot of celery again. Look how much has grown. It's just incredible. Now this garden doesn't just have celery, but I kind of have a piece of snap piece stuck in my throat, so bear with me. Let's go tour around the phase three. So I'm trying to get to the story, but I think I need some water. <laughs> All right, I finally got it down my throat. Sorry about that. I should have had some water on hand. Arizona, in, it's usually pretty dry, so you need to drink a lot of water here. All right, so phase one, two, three. And then I have okra growing in the back over there. I don't know if you can see that. And I have lots of cilantro and parsley. I have some basil growing. I have mint, so I'll go over here. And let's see, I have some, uh, I think I have some sage in there too. Yeah, there's some mint down there. The basil dried out during the winter. I don't know if it'll come back. The okra is gonna come back, I know it will. I did some trimming. And then you can see all the snap peas. So what I had to do to make this was last year during shelter in place, I was listening to people like Dr. Paul Cottrell and Rex Bear from Leak Project and Diamond from Oppenheimer Ranch Project and David Devine from Adapt 2030 and just starting to prepare and think like, okay, if I have to grow my own food, how am I going to do this? And I'm not a green thumb. And I had, gosh, I must have, um, <laughs> I must have failed quite a bit at first, but eventually I was able to grow all of this and I was trying to look up like, how do I do this? How do I do that? And listening to people as they talked. And the bigger picture is that I feel that we're going to have to start growing our own food because of what's going on with the food. And I've talked about this on many shows. Uh, you can go find me again, like I said, on Leak Project or on Dr. Paul Cottrell's show or Green Greg's show, or um, I have an audio version of when it was on Fleur Burn's show. And I talk about how we're being chemicalized in my opinion. And if we don't start growing food, it's going to be really difficult to get pure sources of food. And what I'm seeing going on with how the food is being changed concerns me. So I digress, let's get back to the garden. I just wanted to mention why I'm doing what I'm doing and how I don't use any chemicals and such. Uh, anyone that's listened to me though knows that I have healed my daughters and my son uh, my oldest daughter had autism spectrum disorder and my uh, youngest daughter couldn't walk and had weight pain from her waist down and my son was breaking out uh, in rashes all over his hands and I myself had uh, some issues going on them for the longest time I didn't know what they were and I highly suspect I was mercury poisoned um, but I, I am totally fine now but it was looking like I had relapsing or remitting multiple cirrhosis kind of symptoms that and a mix of fibromyalgia kind of symptoms. Totally fine now and a lot of it has to do because I'm growing food, I'm eating organic clean foods, I'm using the recipes from my recipe book that I wrote so all right let's get back to it. <laughs> it was the snap pea that delayed me I tell you. <laughs> Good snap pea. So we have a bunch of lettuces back there and I had uh, a bunch of dill growing, but that fell over, and now I have dill from phase four I'll show you later. You know, while we're over here, since I'm just right next to it, I'll show you this. This is my potato box. So this is phase six. This came last, and yeah, I'm jumping all around. Sorry about that. That's just how my brain is working today. And so you can see I have lots growing. Now this is my, I wanna say it's like my sixth attempt on growing potatoes. I know, that's crazy. I, <laughs> again, I'm not a green thumb. I'm just doing this because I really want to be able to be self-sufficient. And I envision lots of different communities growing their own food. I envision an education system that is totally different than how they're currently doing it. And I've seen some that maybe are kind of doing little bits and pieces of what I'm looking for, but I'm envisioning this all encompassing like wellness center, education center, almost like a retreat, but it becomes part of someone's daily life. And I'm sorry, I'm wearing um, shades because I'm in Arizona and it's really sunny, but I'll show you my eyes. <laughs> and, uh, and so, the potatoes. 
I actually went and dug up a bunch of the dirt when I had failed the last time, which was probably like a month and a half ago or so. And there were actually little baby potatoes growing. So I thought I had failed and I actually found some that were growing. So I didn't totally fail. And uh, for me, failure means that it's an opportunity to grow and learn more and it's okay to try again. And really there's no true failure. It's just an experience that we learn from. But I'm gonna use that word because people will understand what I mean. So you can see here, so my understanding is that uh, down below they grow and then eventually I'll have to cover this a little bit more with soil. Uh, I'll have to do a little more research, but if somebody knows how to grow potatoes, can you let me know? That would be awesome. Uh, because by no means am I an expert, I'm just showing you what I did starting last year in Shelter in Place because of what I see needed for the future and the vision I have and where I want to go with that. All right, so we have all this and got phase one, phase two, phase three. I had to scrape up all these rocks. I had to put down the dirt, yada, yada, yada. It was a big process. Let's see if I can situate you over here now. This is phase four. So this used to be all grass. So you can imagine what a nuisance that was to get rid of all the grass and to do all the rest of that. Oh, it's just 11-11, huh, funny. All right, so you might see that little tear over there. There was a big windstorm about a month ago. And I'll tell you, this is actually a car tarp. So I, I got a little creative. There was a big windstorm. This whole thing ripped. I was in my yoga class and I was like, oh, oh my gosh, my food. <laughs> because the thing is, it, it, this is all growing so well because it's covered here in Arizona. And people are like, oh my gosh, you're growing lots of celery and you're growing this and you're growing that. And it's like, yeah, and I need the coverings. And I tried with the potato box taking off that covering and that's how I failed the last time. So that potato box, you, it needs the covering. <laughs> and for, so if you live in Arizona, it's a little tip for you. What do I have growing here? My goodness. Well, I went and did an experiment with some black beans and was trying to sprout them. So I think when I replanted, I think I have a bunch of black bean plants going on here too. Um, I have some daikon radish sprouts just starting to come up. I have huge fennel. Oh my gosh. Have you ever roasted a fennel bulb before? Yum. And you take some garlic and some olive oil and some salt and pepper. Okay, so these are fennel. And let's see if I can show you. If I can put this maybe like this. I don't have a videographer. It's just a one woman show here. And you can see my beautiful fennel. And then this is great for juicing too. And I just, oh my gosh, it's so soft. You know, these things are all alive and they have consciousness. So anyhow, let's continue on. Whoa, I'm sinking in the mud. Oh my gosh, I got a tomato growing. Look at this. Oh, there's a tomato. You see him? Isn't he cute? Mm, these tomatoes taste really good. The thing about growing your own food is it tastes so good and so fresh. I can't even remember half the things I planted, but I have chard, I have mustard greens, I have lettuces, and they're kind of hidden in there, so I'm gonna have to go around from a different angle. But you're getting to see a lot of phase four. Oh, look at my baby banana plants, aren't those cute? Oh my gosh. All right, let's see, how's this angle for all of you? Can you see in there? Is it too bright? I'm not sure. Let's bring you closer. How's that? <gasps> I got cauliflower growing, look. Oh my gosh, it's cauliflower. <laughs> it's my first time ever growing cauliflower. So like the, the very first thing I actually successfully grew was dill. <laughs> and the second thing I ever fully successfully grew was watermelon and cantaloupe. And the third thing was cucumbers, but the first time didn't come out that great. Um, and then what really grows so easily, and you can see it here, look at all this cilantro, lots of cilantro. There's lettuce, and then, I don't know if that's a lettuce or a cabbage. I can't remember what I planted, and I should have labeled it, but I have three kids, and I homeschool, and I do a lot of things, so I didn't do that. <laughs> it's kind of a fun adventure when you start doing this and learning. So let's see if I can get you a better angle of inside of here. How's that? Oh, now you can see everything. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? Ta-da! Hey, you can even see the phases in the back. Look at that. I'm having too much fun with this. What else do we have? Oh my gosh. So I took bok choy from the store 
and I put it in water and sprouted it. Like I was like, hmm, can I do this like I do celery? Well, sure enough, yes, and it's flowering now. And I'm doing this really cool thing that I learned from, I think I was listening to either David Debine or Greg Allison, I can't remember. And they were talking about how the Native Americans would just like let certain things grow naturally where they would grow and then they would just kind of weed around it the things that they didn't want there and i've been doing that and so i'll show you at the end i have little pockets of like lettuces and different things growing in different areas and i'm just kind of letting it do its thing i'm like hey if cilantro is growing here and lettuce is growing there and celery is growing there by all means so as you can see it's not like one of those straight plot lines i'm kind of letting things just naturally do their thing and i'm finding that i'm having a lot of success i'm not having any problems with bugs thank goodness and i am not having like any problems with them getting too burnt or anything it, it, there's a symbiotic thing going on here which is really cool oh my gosh there's a hummingbird oh, let's see if i can get it do you see it can you see the hummingbird i don't know if you can see it Look at it. So this thing scares me sometimes. I'll be in here and I'll be working in the garden. And when I do my gardening, I'm out here for hours harvesting like tons. And, and then all of a sudden this hummingbird goes, Z -Z -Z, I'm like, ah! <laughs> it's really funny. All right, so what do we have here? I'm trying to think what else. There's so much to talk about that my mind is almost blank. <laughs> we got the mallow. I've done a video, a short video on mallow. We got different parsleys. Um, I went over the dill. The dill's back there. There's like a whole line of dill, which is great for that Cossack recipe in my recipe book, Rainbow Food Rocks. Go check it out on Amazon. And what else is there? Just, oh, I have green onions coming up. I have kale. It's, it's just like so natural. It's like being in a forest. So anyhow, phase four, you get the gist. Let's go over to phase five. So phase five is a bunch of fruit trees. Now, I don't think... I mentioned this in my other videos in detail, but I had this vision of how to do all of this. And it came very clearly as, you know, phase one, phase two, phase three, and then a possible phase four, which then became very clear during the whole shelter in place for a, a phase five of fruit trees growing around. And phase six is the potato bin. And it's just amazing how this all came to me and I could see it clear as day, like how it should look and what should be on top. Why? So anyhow, so we have different fruit trees. I have a lot of citrus. So this one is my dwarf navel orange. It's been here for just under a year. And then what else do we have here? <gasps> Ooh, I see some budding. Exciting. All right, so we have some Lisbon lemon. And oh, yay, you're getting green again. So this, this is a pomegranate tree and it was getting pretty shabby when it was cold, but it's coming back, yay. And then hibiscus, oh my gosh, if you haven't done hibiscus tea, I love hibiscus tea. I don't see any flowers right now, but they have these beautiful red flowers. And if you mix uh, hibiscus with rose, it tastes so good. And if you wanna put it in like a bubble bath or a, a salt bath, that's really cool. All right, so what else do we have? We have, ah, uh, right here. I'm gonna read it. This is my dwarf ruby red grapefruit and we have one more. I think this is my lime tree. It's very chilly here today. It feels like October. It's so weird. Dwarf. A dwarf lime. And I want to eventually put a mulberry tree over here. And that would just kind of complete everything. But I bought the two baby bananas. I didn't realize that you need more than one banana for them to produce bananas. Like more than one banana tree. So I bought the two babies. And I have the one that's just hanging in there it needs more warmth and it needs to be out of the sun so you can see i have quite a bit here i would love to hear your questions and your comments and i'll just kind of show you a few areas where things are growing naturally before i end this video so let's see if i can bring this down i don't know if you can see right here let's see if i'm in the video and it might be in shade but i have some lettuce growing here i'm gonna actually take a little piece oh sorry plant okay let's see how this is Oh my God, it's delicious. And there's nothing like having fresh, like really fresh food. Like our food comes from all over in the grocery store and gosh knows how long it sits there. So when you have it really fresh, like when I come out here and harvest, I'll just harvest massive amounts and then make lots of salads for the week. And I'll make quinoa bowls and put the salad in it. I'll, um, I'll use certain things to make sauces and soups. 
Oh, which reminds me, I actually have beets growing too. And I have a recipe in my recipe book for borscht, which is a beet soup, it's a Russian soup. And I kind of have my own little twist on it, making my own broth. So all the pieces that you wouldn't eat, you can actually use to make a vegetable broth. So I pretty much don't waste anything. I have a compost bin too, it's back there. I'll, I'll show you that. Mm. It's really nice coming out here and getting some fresh snacks. So, oh yeah, look. So here's some cilantro. I didn't plant that one. That one's growing naturally. That one's growing naturally. As we go around, we got more lettuce growing naturally. Like, check this out. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I don't know if you can see it. I can't see what you see. So there is my compost bin. I'm not going to open it up because a bunch of flies will come out. <laughs> um, what do I want to end with? Oh, I had some rocket I wanted to also end with. Sorry. Keep you on just a few more seconds. So I have rocket growing all over the place. And that stuff is really delicious too. Uh, well... You know, there's my chard, it's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of green onions. I could go on and on and on. I just wanted to give you a little update and let you know whoop, what I'm up to. And I hope that you like, subscribe, share with like-minded people, and stay tuned. I think I will be doing another show on Leak Project next week. Um, if I can get that scheduled, otherwise maybe in a week or two after that. And then I'll be doing some adventuring and I'll keep you posted about that. Thank you. Bye-bye.